Hey, yo, truck series. You know, when I watch a NASCAR race, usually a truck race, Friday nights, I want to be entertained. You know, I want to have a nice, relaxing Friday night watching a good race, a little bit of chaos, but overall, just a good, fun, entertaining race. I don't know why I thought that I would get that watching the truck series race. You know, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Every single time I watch the truck series, I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be a little chaos, but I think we're going to see a good race. Clearly, the whole premise of the truck series is for me to raise my blood pressure to the point where it cuts my life off by 20 years. And anyone that enjoys seeing me in pain, like what happened in Phoenix. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. I wanted to end my life right now after watching this. I spent two hours or more of my life. Well, you can thank the truck series because I'm going to lose my again. I, I swear. What? Did we not learn anything from Phoenix? Phoenix was one of the worst races I've ever watched in my entire life. Daytona is now tops the list of the worst Daytona race I've ever watched in a long time. And is also one of the worst races I've ever watched. To, to give you an idea, this race broke a record, tie, or broke a record for most amount of cautions in the history of the truck series at Daytona with 12. The race was 101 laps. There were more laps under caution than there were under green. 49 laps under green, 52 under yellow. Almost about even. Why? How? I, I, what are we doing out here? What are we doing out here? I swear, again, I, I had a feeling. I know. Okay, hold on. Let me just, let's back up a little bit. The race at the beginning already started off just complete chaos. The big one happened on lap six. Six. We didn't even get through a stage. We didn't even get through 10 laps without a big crash. I, I swear, there was like a big crash or a caution every 10 laps or so, it felt like. I mean, you, you, you had even rain multiple times. Just cars or trucks, just they could not control themselves. I don't know if it's the... How the truck cars, or trucks, I should say, I keep saying truck cars, but if the trucks, how they're set up, because it seems to me that they're just more on edge, you're more erratic, because every single time coming off the corner, especially off of turn number four, they would just lose it. I don't know if it was the track just getting more worn out, if it was the trucks, if it was the drivers, I don't know, but it felt like this race, every single lap, they were going to spin out. There were some good racing. I'm not going to lie. There were some good racing, but it was overshadowed just the amount of crashing, constant crashing and wrecking each other. I mean, it was just pathetic. It was just so pathetic. I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking the final laps, I don't care who wins, just stop wrecking. All right. We got Arca coming up. It's a late night. Just stop wrecking. Nope. We got to keep on wrecking. Now, there were some contenders, surprisingly. Uh, and there were, again, some crazy moments. There was even a moment near the cleanse laps of the race where Ben Rhodes and I think Taylor, or Tyler Ankrum in the 18 banged wheels when they were on board with Rhodes' car or Rhodes' truck. There were a lot of intense moments that made the race very intriguing to keep watching. Also, just, or I should say keep watching, keep suffering through. I think that's the better word to use. Um, but... There were some legit contenders. You had Ben Rhodes, Johnny Sauter, Nick Sanchez, who I believe led the most laps with 26. Uh, there were some legit contenders out in front. Um, also some surprising drivers. Drivers like Brett Holmes, who led a few laps, was up towards the front until he spun out while leading the race. Again, off of turn number four, which was just that one spot. If you if you had a place to bet on when a wreck is going to happen, nine times out of ten, it was off of turn number four. I don't know why, but it was. But in the closing laps... It was a battle between Nick Sanchez and Raj Carruth. Uh, Sanchez got out ahead. Carruth then got a run. You know, he had big help from Corey LaJoy to keep him in the mix. But on the final lap, I don't know what happened, but Raj came up the racetrack off for turn number two, hits another car who then hits Taylor Gray. Gray goes sideways and then gets hit by Daniel Dye, who goes up in the air, reminiscent of Matt Crafton a few years ago, lands on another truck coming to rest. I mean... It, I, I don't know how many uh, how many trucks were involved, but it looked like 15 trucks. The entire field. I'm pretty sure only three cars drove away, uh, or at least that drove away somewhat unscathed. And Nick Sanchez was out in front and won his very first truck series race. Happy that Sanchez won. But there were some things to talk about after the race. I mentioned Raj Karuth, who I think drove a great race up until that final lap. I love him. I, I love him. I love Raj. I want him to succeed. 
but he did cause a wreck. I have to call how I see it. He did cause a wreck. He did cause that pileup. But and something that was very interesting that social media started talking involves Bubba Wallace. Because for some reason, anytime Bubba does something, all social media guy be like, oh, what happened? What's he doing? If many, many of you know, Bubba and Raj are really close. Raj considers Bubba his mentor, uh, considering they're the only two current black drivers in NASCAR at the moment. You know, they do have that common ground. So Raj leans on Bubba for a lot of advice, you know, and Bubba, you know, tries to help Raj got his way up towards uh, the ranks of NASCAR. And they caught this moment where seemed as though Raj offered a handshake. Bubba kind of gave him the cold shoulder, then pulled him away from the cameras to talk to him. Now, some people were jumping to conclusions by saying on how, oh, Bubba either is going to want, want to fight Raj or just some outlandish stuff. The way I look at it is this. First off, it's not of our business to talk about what happened, but Raj did give some insight. He basically said that they talked about what happened on the final lap, which is something I assume. And how I look at it is simply put, a big brother telling a little brother, hey, you messed up, accept it. I don't know what set it off, but Bubba went over to talk to Raj. And again, Raj gave a handshake, but Bubba seemed as though that he was basically saying that, hey, no, listen, this is a serious talk. We need to talk about this. Bubba also looked to the right and saw that the cameras were right at their faces. That's why he pulled Raj aside to push him, uh, to bring him more towards the infield grass so that they could have a private one-on-one -on -one talk because, you know, with Bubba in the media, he knows. He's been through it all. So he doesn't want the media to know about their conversation. Again, I just see it as, you know, a mentor giving a mentee some much-needed advice because, you know, again, everyone, not just the young drivers, again, it, and it was so weird. In Phoenix, it was the young drivers that were acting like idiots, like Carson Josefar, uh, 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 Corey Heim, and so on. But in this race, everyone was an idiot, both young and old. You had Matt Crafton, what, three-time, four-time truck champion? God, he needs to retire. Please retire. It didn't matter who you are, how much experience, they were all racing like idiots. Not only that, but also Ben Rhodes, I forgot to mention, the defending champion, he had, a, after that incident where he got hit by Tyler Ankrum, he had a tire go down, had to come onto pit road. Then he came back on the racetrack, but he had a tire go down, which I completely understand because his car was damaged. What I want to know is why was he in the middle of the racetrack? Why? If your car is damaged, why are you in the middle of the racetrack? Why aren't you up against the wall or on the apron? Why are you in the middle? And causes a pileup, collecting, I think, Tony Brenninger. Uh, I think he also collected Tanner Gray and I think another truck. But again, I it's like no one, it's like everyone just walked into Daytona, took off their heads, pulled their brains, and chucked it into Lake Lloyd because no one was using their heads at all. And oh my God, I just realized something. Atlanta's next week. Atlanta. <laughs> oh, I am so, Atlanta is next week. We're not going to make it this season. This season. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm so happy for Nick that he won, but I was so done with this race by about halfway. I just said, please, please, Lord have mercy. Please just end this race. End it. End my suffering. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go to bed. But uh, just an absolute embarrassment. For the second week in a row. I, I Again, I don't know what it is. Is it the trucks? Is it the driver etiquette? What is it? Because this is now, again, we can, for, I thought for, I don't know why, but I thought Phoenix maybe send a message because that even the cup drivers were dragging them through the mud. I'm thinking, you know what? I'm pretty sure the Phoenix, they all looked at each other and think, hey, we got to clean up. And what do we do? Uh, you set the most amount of cautions ever at a truck race at Daytona. In what 24, 25 years? It's been they've been racing at Daytona. Congratulations, good job. I hate this series so. I, I hate this series so much, and yet I keep watching it. But yeah, congrats to Nick Sanchez. I'm so done with this series. I'm going right to bed. Actually, no. Oh God, we got, I got Arca. We got to watch Arca. I swear to God, if Arca is at this point, I I just if Arca is single file, I honestly would not mind because. I want to go to bed. I am done with this series. Hi, uh, this is uh, uh, Editing Jet here. And uh, yeah, the ARCA race was just as 
abysmal. I am done with this series. Now, am I gonna watch next week? You bet your ass I am. <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm out. I'm done.